Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. 2022 was a really good year for me for Suriname red tails, and I produced four liters of babies. And there was one born a little later in the season that I actually didn't share with you. And so today I wanted to show you guys some of the babies from that crossing, as well as the parents. And these animals haven't been put up for sale yet, but they're gonna be for sale quite soon, probably in the next few weeks. And so what's kind of special about these animals, these are the Prometheus bloodline. This is the mother. She was a, a daughter of Prometheus himself, born back in 2016. And you can see she's got the characteristics of the bloodline. She's got kind of this dirty, wild look with lots of background markings, very high contrast, irregularly peaked saddles, and a long red tail, just like her father. And so what's kind of special about this particular litter is that the father is also from the Prometheus bloodline. Uh, Prometheus was his father also. So this is basically a line bred cross that I did to try to enhance the appearance of the animals as far as the uh, characteristics from the Prometheus bloodline. And so these guys you can kind of think of as double dose Prometheus. And I know people use that term with regards to different morph bloodlines, but if you're talking about um, the Prometheus bloodline, the animals that I produced previously have all been just 25% Prometheus, you know, because they're basically grandchildren of Prometheus. Whereas the litter, the babies from this litter are 50% Prometheus uh, because the parents were both siblings or offspring from Prometheus. And so it is an inbreeding. And you know, I thought about this, you know, should I be inbreeding? You know, is it that big of a deal? I've done a lot of comments or a lot of, uh, done episodes in the past about inbreeding. It's really not that clear of an answer, how bad it is or how um, safe it is, for example. You would always want to try to avoid inbreeding whenever possible. Uh, in some cases, if you're trying to enhance the particular characteristics of a line, uh, inbreeding is the best way to do it. So bear in mind that the babies from this are descended from siblings, so they should be crossed with uh, unrelated stock to prevent inbreeding depression. Um, that being said, I've heard stories about breeders directly inbreeding animals, you know, snakes, for six or even seven generations with no apparent negative effects. I've also heard stories about people who've done this uh, and after a few generations, there are definite negative effects. So I think every case is different. You just have to kind of see how it goes. But anyway, these babies I'm really psyched about because they definitely do have an enhanced appearance of Prometheus. Because, but as far as the genetic contributions from Prometheus, these animals are about as good as you can get if you've been looking to get into a project with that particular bloodline. So I'm going to show the father of the litter at the end of the video but right now i'm going to get out my close-up lens and we'll have a close look at some of the babies from this particular suriname cross so i'm going to show you guys some of the babies from this double dose prometheus suriname litter and these guys were born back in uh on september 18th my last litter for 2022 and just a really phenomenal litter, kind of a smaller litter with seven babies, but I'm gonna show you a few of the favorite, my favorites, and I thought I'd start with number seven here. This is a male, and he's just got this gorgeous look overall. You can see he's got these peak saddles, and just check out that long red tail. This guy's just got that special glow that some of the best true red tails have. There's a close-up look. So this guy is, uh, his grandfather was Pro was Prometheus on two sides, so he's got 50% Prometheus contribution. And then interestingly, the uh, first litter, the 2016 litter from Prometheus, the female was from Florida Red Tails Bloodlines. And if you look at this guy, you can see he's got this connected uh, head stripe to the first saddle there. And that's a Florida Red Tails trait, so I think that's where he got it. His father has it. Uh, his grandmother had it. Uh, Prometheus, of course, did not have it. But it's interesting how these different characteristics from the different bloodlines appear in the animals. But this guy just has this glow to him. It's kind of hard to describe. Just a really beautiful top-notch Suriname. And here's more of a side shot, but you can see that 
velvety long red tail and the beautiful saddles and this nice pinkish glow to his sides. Just a really awesome example of a Suriname red tail. Here's another male from the litter. This is 6M and another really beautiful one. This guy, his saddles are a little bit more compact, a little bit more peaked, uh, maybe a little bit more symmetrical of a pattern. But you can see that long red tail. And I always like to count the number of red tail saddles. And some of these guys have like nine or ten really red tail saddles. And it's probably about, I don't know, maybe a quarter of their length is the tail. So really beautiful looking animal. Uh, just another really solid animal. Lots of beautiful pink colors. Uh, this guy doesn't have the connected first saddle to the head stripe. I think there's only like one or two from the litter that have that. But uh, anyway, just beautiful animal. 50% Prometheus contribution. You know, 25% Florida red tails. A couple other really good bloodlines thrown in there. Some Fudo and Eckerd as well. Uh, but just a really lovely looking animal. There's a side shot of 6M. Luckily these guys are really mellow. They're not trying to escape and quite docile as well. No hissing, no striking. Just been an absolute pleasure to work with. Health-wise, they've been awesome. They're all eating frozen thawed rodents, no problem. None of them have ever regurgitated or any had any kind of health issues. So just real strong, solid, true red tails. Perfect if you're looking for a top-notch pet or animal to add to your breeding group. Now for a few of the females. This is a female 4F from the litter. And just another amazing looking animal. Just take a look at that tail. And this one, you can see her saddles are a little bit more pinched. You know, they're not quite as wide as some of the other animals. And then interestingly, she's got a little bit of speckling as well. You know, the original Prometheus had a lot of the background markings and flecks and speckles and freckles. And that's kind of why I liked him, because he really looked like a wild looking animal, like something you would see in the rainforests of South America. Not something that's been uh, selectively bred to be super clean and super unnatural looking. And there's a close-up panning shot of female 4F from the litter. You can see how tight some of those saddles are. So these are all really beautiful animals. I think it might be all the animals included, probably my best Suriname litter I've ever produced quite frankly. Here's another female. This is female 5F. Just another really nice example. This one has kind of more jungly looking saddles and by jungly I mean that they're kind of a little asymmetrical and uh, you know not perfectly symmetrical or perfectly shaped but just kind of what you would expect from a wild, more wild looking animal. But then check out that long red tail. And there's a close-up you can see the shape of her saddles and some of the background markings. This is kind of more what the original Prometheus looked like. And, you know, as these animals grow up and mature, they'll get a lot more contrasty and more of a darker background color and the saddles just really pop out. Okay, one more animal to show you in the, maybe I've saved the best for last. This one is 3F. So this one is uh, just kind of got it all. I just love the shape of her saddles. They're, you know, the perfect placement, the perfect amount of contrast, the very long red tail, just a gorgeous looking animal overall. You know, I'm not planning on holding back any of these animals because I've got so many Surinams that I've held back over the last few years, but now I'm really having second thoughts because this is just, this is exactly what I look for in that boa you know, for my Suriname breeding trials. I'd have to say that this one and the first male, number seven, number three and seven, these are just phenomenal looking animals. And, uh, but you can't keep them all, as they say. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful animal. Just love the look of this one. Just check out the contrast between the background color and those saddles. And this female actually hasn't shed lately. It's been about a month and a half, so... Right after she sheds, she's going to look even brighter as far as the color, but just a beautiful, beautiful animal. Suriname female number three. 
you can't beat uh, number three and number seven are lucky numbers and I think uh, from this litter there is are probably the definitely the two standouts three and seven so those were some of the double dose Prometheus bloodline babies that I had last fall and these babies will be up for sale shortly I just have to get my camera out take some nice pictures of them which has actually been on my list of things to do for the last couple months but uh, we'll get it done soon here so I thought I'd end it by showing you the father of the litter. So this is another 2016 Prometheus bloodline baby, uh, who Prometheus was his father. And he definitely has the looks of the particular bloodline. This really wild look with lots of background markings, very high contrast, um, kind of a long red tail. He's kind of in a darker phase right now. So his tail is kind of a little bit darker red. But you know, typically he has a long, deep red, bright tail, uh, as well as the high contrast markings. Just a really nice looking Suriname red tail. Look at all the speckling on his belly. And this particular line is kind of what I would imagine a boa living in the rainforest to look like. You know, not something that's been cleaned up by captive breeding, you know, to look like a sanitized pet boa, but more of a wild look to it. Anyway, um, Hope you guys enjoyed this video and looking at these boas. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you might have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.